Good morning, Tequila Sean, the Inspirational Beauty Boss here. And uh, I am up having my usual cup of hot ginger and lemon tea and sat down to get my study in the word. And uh, I knew that I was going to do this video upon waking the Holy Spirit um, was talking to me about um, a post that I shared on my personal page and an individual um, commented on my post and that's okay that's fine the comment is not a problem at all it's a public page um, our, our posts at times are going to ignite or inspire or encourage conversation or communication and um, so that's 100% okay. That's what the posts are shared for. They're, they're also shared to express um, my personal faith as well as uh, the reality of my faith. And I got a comment post last night that initially, I, I'll be honest, initially I was offended by it because I'm human. I was offended by it, not for necessarily what was said, but because I was trying to, in my human, humanality, that's not a word, but I'm gonna make it a word, in my humanality, trying to understand what the purpose and point of the comment was. Because the individual that commented, and that's what I'm making the video for, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this opportunity, this is what the Holy Spirit told me, he said, use it as a teachable moment. So rather than to be offended by what they said, get out of your flesh, Takiya, and walk in the spirit and let me lead and guide you. And so I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to use this as a teachable moment, but I'm going to be very transparent about it because I want to address it as well. The Holy Spirit wants me to address it. Um, so the offense came because, again, I was trying to understand what the purpose and the point of the comment was because it was very contradictive to what I had actually said. So I did. I wasn't sure if I was to take it as a challenge to what I was saying, my personal faith, or if I was to take it as um, correction to my personal faith and... Um, so I remember immediately, you know, wanting to respond and fire back with where I was coming from. And God let me tap, 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 tap type it out. And then thank God for the word of God uh, that says we are to be swift to hear, quick to, uh, slow to anger, slow to wrath and swift to hear because by the time I got to the end of that text message because I always have an ear to God the Holy Spirit said don't send it and I'm grateful for that and my son then actually um, confirmed that and said mom what have you taught me my entire life you cannot respond to everybody if you know who you are and you know what you believe in then you don't respond to everything and you know <laughs> Thank God for children who selectively remember what you taught them. Um, but I thank God for the Holy Spirit. So I left it alone and I was like, you know what? You're right, I'm not gonna respond. But let me tell you why I think offense, not I think, I know offense began to rise up was because this individual in particular, um, they seem to only interject at certain times when I am speaking from a very personal place and we had a private conversation about our different views on the giftings of God. And I do believe I did an excellent job of allowing the Holy Spirit to lead me on my communication in a private platform with this individual. And I said, you know, hey, I believe what the word of God says. And you believe what you feel the word of God says. And I'm not going to dispute what you believe. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to try to correct you. Um, all I know is what I believe and what I believe is what I've actually been through, what I've seen. And we had a very long 
uh, conversation and communication in a direct message last year around the same time when I posted something about the gifts of speaking in tongue and I had asked tongues and I asked people, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I had asked people their personal views on it just because I wanted knowledge because I felt like the Holy Spirit was leading me in a direction to talk and teach about that more. And so the same individual kind of projected their views on it. And some of the people in the comments actually took offense to it as well because it was taken out of context what her response was. And I diffused it and I took the conversation to a private platform because we want to do everything in love. You know, that's how Jesus wants us to do it. You know, a lot of times we do get in our flesh and we do get offended. But one thing I was taught and I've learned is I will not argue the word of God with you. I will not argue the Bible with you. I will not argue what I believe with you, what I know to be, not, not what I just believe, but what I know to personally be true in my life. So when I am posting on my personal page, I am speaking from personal experience. And so um, that's one thing I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna argue. Another thing I'm not gonna do is publicly make you look bad um, because that's the direction this conversation was going last year because so many people that know me personally and publicly know that I walk out my life in Christ very publicly and I speak from personal experiences. And so it was going in the direction where this individual was going to be attacked for the sake of supporting me. And I didn't want that. I don't ever want that. Um, so I took it to a private platform and we had this long text communication. And honestly, the last thing I said was, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's, we don't, we can agree to disagree, but let's do this in a manner where that we can educate through the Holy Spirit about what the true word of God says. And I said, you, you we do have the Bible, but I'm speaking from experience and uh, my personal experience. And uh, honestly, the conversation ended. There was never um, a resolution to yes I would love to communicate that about about that to Kia and so I left it alone I felt like you know she doesn't want to talk about it she doesn't want to communicate about it and that's fine that's okay we're going to believe what we believe but then to see a year later a comment again on another one of my posts that was very similar to speaking about my faith and my personal experience I was like look are you antagonizing me are you challenging me what is the point of you jumping in here because we had an opportunity last year to speak about this. So last night I felt like God was like, just leave it alone. But then I woke up this morning to the Holy Spirit giving me all kind of scripture to address it um, and to use it as a teachable moment because I prayed for this individual. And what I prayed was, what the Holy Spirit revealed to me is that there actually is inside in challenging my faith and what I'm saying internally with this individual, there is, there are some question marks. There is a desire that to know that potentially what she's talking about may be true. And uh, that is my purpose. That is my calling is I have the gifting and the office of a teacher. I have the gifting and the office of a prophet. I have the gifting and the office of an evangelist. Um, we all have giftings. We all have callings. But it is up to us to get in God's face and to absolutely have clarity on what our lane, so to speak, is. So I kind of felt like, you know, yo, I don't jump in your lane, but you keep jumping in mine while I'm running. And if you jump in my lane while I'm running, you are going to get ran over. And God was like, calm down. Let's do this another way. <laughs> so let's use this as a teachable moment. So what I was addressing in my post was I made a statement that I said, I want to, as a believer, I want to be like Jim Cantor. I don't know how you say his last name, Cantori or Cantor, but I know he is a news anchor and he is a, um, you want to say world renowned. He's well known that if Jim Cantor shows up or is there, if there's reports that he's coming to your city with some sort of natural disaster, hurricane, tornado, snowstorm, Bigfoot, whatever you want to call it, if he is popping up on the map under the rate on the radar in your city, then it's it's real. It's about to get real. And I mentioned that because in South Carolina, where I'm not at right now, but where my businesses and family and friends and where I do a lot of um, building and my calling and my territory for kingdom purpose is there. I know that we just experienced the 
the aftermath and the outskirts of Hurricane Ian. And uh, I know that someone had posted that Jim Cantor was on his way to Beaufort this past week when that happened. So that was huge. So my referencing that as a believer was to say that, you know, when when someone who, and I don't know if he's a believer or not, that's not what this is about, but let's just say hypothetically, we don't know if he is. The point I'm making is that me, myself as a believer, as a follower of Christ, as one who um, walks this earth in the name of Jesus for his sake, I want to be known like that. And when I say I, I am referencing Jesus Christ. The, the word of God says that we were created in the image of God that we have been given all power and authority, that Jesus gave us the kings of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom. I'm going to spit out a lot of scripture here. And what I will do is I will edit this and I will go back and I will put every scripture um, on here because the Holy Spirit just gave me so much scripture to address this comment and just to teach. Um, so when Jim Cantor shows up, you know that he's coming to report on a massive situation. What I was saying was as believers, we should be able to show up in a region, in a territory, in a zone, in a city, in a place, in a school where we have mass shootings going on, where we have uh, politics tearing us apart, where we have death walking through situations, where we have war-torn places, where we have um, abuse and neglect and trauma and all kind of things going on. But as believers, we have been given power and authority that when we walk on the scene, it should be known by the gates of hell. That's what the word of God says. The gates of hell should not prevail. That when we walk on the scene with the power and in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ, we have, according to Luke 10, 19, been given power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. I referenced in my post that when I walk on the scene, which means Jesus is in me because the word of God says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in me. So if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in me and I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, according to Romans 8, 9, and 10, or 9, I'll get the right one. Romans 10, 8 and 9, I believe it is. The same spirit that lives in me. When I go on the scene, if the Lord says to Kia, I can use you to lay hands, to rebuke death. I can use you to speak life. Because the power, the word of God also says that the power of life and death is in our tongues. So I was very clear. I wasn't mixing my words when I wrote the post and said, that God has used me to raise the dead. My children, both of them, I've been in rooms where I've seen my children, my daughter slit her wrist. My son stopped breathing on the OR table. Life left his body and the Lord used me to speak a word and I watched life come back into his body. Now, I said in my post, I don't talk about these things publicly enough because sometimes I just write and I throw them out there. And if you don't believe, you won't believe. But Jesus also said there were times in the Bible when he walked into rooms to raise that young woman from the dead. He said, Talitha Ku, my daughter, arise. But before he did that, he had to put people out with their unbelief. Those people knew Jesus. They saw Jesus. They knew him as the Messiah and as the healer. But when they had the opportunity to see it, they didn't believe it. The word of God also says, who is it? I believe it was the uh, the centurion who, whose, whose child laid sick. And he said, you know, Jesus, if, if, if you speak that word only, if you can, he'll be healed. But help mine unbelief. So the problem here is not the fact that I believe that Jesus can use me to lay hands and speak life and raise the problem here is that enough believers don't recognize the authority and the power that we have to walk in his will and in his word, and the unbelief needs to be helped. I posted and I talked about when we show up on the scene, um, we should be seeing lives, li lives healed, souls saved. That's what the word of God says. The word says that he who wins souls must be wise. The word of God says that 
These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall cast out demons. I'm not speaking just because of what I read in the word, but trust, I read in the word. I read it. I devour it. I breathe it. I believe it. I go to it. But I am also speaking from experience because every last one of those things God has used me to do, to cast out demonic forces. I've dealt with this in my home. I've dealt with this in ministry. I've dealt with this in the world. I've seen demons cast out. Does that mean I saw devils come out with horns? No. Dear God, no, I don't want to see that. However, if the Lord chooses to use me to deal with that, I will, because my faith is as such. So when I was talking about my post, I was talking about my faith my faith. But I talk about my faith because the word of God says in Revelations 12 and 11, I believe it is, that we've overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. How do we teach others to overcome? We show them what we've already dealt with in experience. I am an experiential believer. I walk by faith and not just by sight, but I use what I've gone through to teach others. What else did I talk about, Holy Spirit? Because I want you to take your time with this. Because again, we're going to use this as a teachable moment. The, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Because the comment said, these were things that the apostles did. And that the apostles are no longer here. And that is so boxed in because Jesus, when he ascended, he said to the apostles, he said, if I don't go, the comforter can't come. And if the comforter doesn't come, then I can't leave you with those gifts that I have for you. And you are to go ye out into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, we could say the apostles that died out with the apostles. There are still there is still the anointing of the apostle. There's still the anointing and the call. That's what it says in Ephesians chapter 4 that God gave some apostles and prophets, and evangelists, and pastors, and teachers, all for the edifying of the body of Christ. What does edifying mean? That means to encourage, to pour into, to teach, to support. That's what we're here for. That's, that's who I am. I'm one of those called. We all are if we learn to tap into the gifts that God gave us. So we can also look at the prophet Elijah, whose understudy was Elisha, when Elijah passed and those bones, just the bones, just to be thrown on to touch the bones, that anointing transferred to Elisha. The anointing didn't disappear, baby doll. It's still here in the earth's realm. It has been passed on. It has been passed down. There are still living, breathing humans that are being used by the spirit of God. So this is the second time that I've had a believer, a sister, and a brother, and another in Christ, because that's what we are. We're not supposed to be in war and struggling with one another to try to tell each other this is right and that is wrong. We are supposed to come together in unity for the edifying. And so, like I said, I will not argue the word of God with anyone. I will not argue my experiences with anyone. I will continue to teach and to preach the gospel as I know it. But like I said, this is the second time that directly and probably won't, I know it won't be the last and publicly it's the second time that I know of, but I'm sure it's not the first that it has been misunderstood and intentionally or unintentionally miscommunicated that when I say I want to be like, that I am trying to put myself on display. Um, I'm displaying Jesus Christ because the word of God says, let your light so shine that let your good works, let your light so shine that your good works may be seen of others and it will glorify your father in heaven. I'm kind of botching that up, but it is in Matthew. It talks about a city set on a hill. It says a city set on a hill cannot be hid. What does that mean? It has to be seen. So please don't misunderstand when I say I want to be like. What I am saying is I want the glory of God to take precedence and to kill LaShawn.
I want when Tequila LaShawn walks on the scene, you know that is an absolute believer of Jesus Christ. You know that is a woman that is so on fire for God that she is willing to look crazy even to an unbelieving believer. Unbelieving believer. Listen to how that sounds. An unbelieving believer with little belief. I'm not here to please man. I'm not here to put myself on display. I am here because I care about God's people. That's my purpose and my call. And I will begin to share, I say it all the time, I will begin to share more and more publicly because people do need to know. People do need to know that Old Testament, or not even just Old Testament, but the acts of the apostles and things that people now try to say are no longer here, these things really do still happen. They are happening in my life. I deal with things on a daily. And when I say deal, I mean I deal with it spiritually. I go to the word of God. I speak God's word. I stand in my authority. I walk in my authority. I have an ear. This is one thing I had to learn also. I said it to my spiritual mentor the other day. I said, one thing I've had to learn, I would get frustrated or upset with my expectations expectations with people because why are you not obeying God? Why, why are, he's telling us to do, why are you not obeying? Like, it's that simple. The word of God says it is better to obey God than man. The word of God says our obedience is better than sacrifice. But then like a light bulb, Jesus spoke to me the other day and he said, Takiyah, it is a gift the way that you hear my voice. Everybody does not hear my voice the way that you do. And it clicked. Now, am I doing anything special? I'm not doing anything that's inaccessible to you. I am seeking God. I am getting in my word. I am believing God. I am trusting God. Now, I do believe that there are different gifts, diversities of gifts. That's what the word of God also says, that the gifts of God are without repentance, meaning he chooses who he wants to give gifts to. And no matter what we do, we can't shake them. We can't outrun them. Our sin can't even stop it. Satan is gifted. He was the minister of music. He was created as the most beautiful being to usher in the worship in heaven. And that was because, that was his fall, was because he thought everybody was worshiping him. Everybody was worshiping him. I'm beautiful. I'm creating the worship. And uh, he was thrown from heaven. But his gifts aren't without repentance. He still has them. If we look at music today, we can see satanic ministry in music. So our gifts are there and we have to be very careful to understand that and to know how to utilize those and to walk fully in the potential of those. Now, let me address something else about being used to lay hands. The same spirit of Jesus, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the anointing of God. That is the power of God. I don't raise people from the dead. It's Jesus in me through the power of laying on of hands and speaking that raises people from the dead. Not me. I'm just an empty vessel that can be poured into and used and pliable how God wants to. Now let's address necromancy because I hear the Holy Spirit saying address that because people will say, well, raising the dead, that's necromancy. There's a difference between Satan's kingdom, witchcraft, warlocks, demonic possession, um, voodoo. All of that stuff is satanic because see, Satan can mimic the kingdom of God but he can't duplicate it. He can mimic it, but he can't duplicate it. So witchcraft and uh, what is it? Um, psychics and all of that, they can duplicate that. It talks about that in the Old Testament, the sorcerers and things like that. They can mimic it, but they can't duplicate it. The spirit of God, when God does it, it is in Christ. So there is a difference. So trust and believe, I'm not worshiping Satan. I'm not using rituals and potions and things. I'm speaking to God. I remember, I believe it was Smith Wigglesworth, who was one of the greats of, um, uh, of, of Christianity. He was quoted as saying, you know, when he was doing his travels and his, his ministry, that uh, he and a group of friends, they would travel. And when they would come across people that they found that were dead, young people or old, they would stop and they would pray and say, Lord, has this person lived out all the days of their life that you called them to? And if the Holy Spirit said yes, they left it alone. But if the Holy Spirit said no, they said a very simple prayer, laid hands and raised that individual from the dead. They sought God. 
God, if this individual's time is not over, if Satan came in and cut their life off short, Lord, do you still want them alive? And that was an individual that believed and fully walked in the power of their authority and their calling. That's what I want. I want when I close my eyes at 104 years old, because that's the age I'm going out at. When I close my eyes and go home, I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to lay crowns at the king's feet and say I ran my race with purpose and I wasn't afraid of what man said. Um, going back, thank you, Holy Spirit, something else he wants me to address, to worship. I am a worshiper. My name actually in Hebrew means worshiper of God. Did not know that until a few years ago. My beautiful, beautiful auntie uh, named me at birth and had no idea what she was speaking over me. But my name, Takiya, in, wor in Hebrew means worshiper of God. I am a worshiper. The way that I worship is a method and a gift of ministry that ushers the presence of God into the room. I can't sing. I'm not gifted with a beautiful voice to sing, but I have power and authority in my voice to talk. And when the Lord uses me to worship, the presence of God is tangible. The sick are healed. Chains are broken. Lives come to Christ. I've seen it. I know it. And I spoke about this when God sent me to a ministry and said, you're here for the purpose of teaching them worship. And it was rejected. And I made a statement about people watching the way I worship. And it was taken in the wrong direction. And I was told, we're not here to watch you worship in so many words. It's not about you. It's about God. That went over his head. I wasn't talking about me. I'm talking about the gift of God that's in me. So we have to be very careful when we come for people and attempt to attack them without knowing whose they are and the calling that is on their life. I think that's it. I don't hear the Holy Spirit saying to say anything more. So I'm gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna go finish sipping my tea. God bless. Always do things in love. I'm so glad I obeyed God because sis wanted to go in. <laughs> I'm human. Because here's the thing about social media. Again, it's very public. But I try to, when I see people's posts about politics and faith, and I don't disagree with it, I don't say anything. I don't get involved. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I know who I am and I know what I believe. But when I post my personal experience on my public page, I have the right to address it. I may not like what you say or how you come for me, but I feel like, and this is what I said, God, do I need to protect or correct this post? And he said, teach. So I get to do that on my personal or my public page because it's mine. God bless you. Tequila Sean, the Inspirational Beauty Boss, signing off.